friends, it's Nancy. Um, back to do another video. What would what would Martha Stewart do? So this um, last project, this was written, inspired by July 2008. This page with the blues and purples. Um, so what I ended up doing was making these journaling cards with um, paint chips. I can't remember which one I was struggling with. I think it was this one I was struggling with. But, um, so there's that one. This one. And then the one that just about killed me. That's how I ended up organizing that one. So that is, oh, I tied up my box. I have a little box here that I'm keeping my What Would Martha Do um, projects in. See? Alrighty, so the next one I wanted to do was um, Wildflowers. So there was a couple of different photos of wildflowers and when I'm driving this time of year and and the wildflowers that are just crowding the sides of the roads right now the um, the chicory and the Queen Anne's lace and um, little daisies I just love them but I was thinking, you're probably sick and tired of seeing me do flower things. So we're going to do something a little bit different today. So I need a piece of scrap paper. This is crazy. I literally just moved a piece of scrap paper so I could sit down. All right. So I have this box that I keep just random pieces of paper in. I've taken the books out and the big chunks. I've just left the little chunks in. Um, so I, that I have something handy to do little collages with. Um, but I just want to add a few more bits to the mix. So I've got my little tear ruler here. I got this book last Saturday, I think, at a thrift store. And it's, um, it's in Hindi. So it's got some really unusual text. It's very white, but we can, we can use some uh, ink to fix that. Um, I've got some tea brewing right now, so maybe I will rip some pages out and um, get that going so that next time I'll have some tea dyed pages. So I'm just tearing off the um, the straight edges and just make some random hunks that one's hardly worth keeping I'll get rid of you so there's a few little bits and pieces and um, had a little leftover music paper from something. Although I think I've already got lots of music paper in here. This was just a strip that was sitting in the top. So might as well get it used up, right? <laughs> I guess that was kind of fragile. And I don't have to use them this size. I can tear them down as I use them. This is from a novel in French. I'm pretty sure I have a Hungarian book somewhere too. I 
have no idea how this is going to turn out. I guess we're going to find out together. And this one is a um, German um, chemistry book. This is already a torn edge, but I just want it torn a little closer to the actual text. And I like this, it's a little different because there's lots of numbers and columns. In fact, I might just tear them along the columns. So I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, it's Wednesday. Of a short week for us because of the holiday. Um, I have a feeling there was a full moon. <laughs> there was three of us at the office today. Generally we're still working from home but um, sometimes when need be we have to go in and do little bits of this and that. So I spent the day at the office with uh, Jordan, who's my son, he works at the same office as me, and our office manager, and it was just crazy. Um, yeah. <laughs> I My clients were okay, but theirs were off uh, on a tangent, I guess. Let's might as well tear this up while I'm here. So, halfway through the afternoon, I said, well, all I can say is I've had enough of you two. They thought I was leaving. <laughs> so when I came back out to sort of the common area again, Jordan says, I thought you were leaving. And I said, what made you think I was leaving? You said you were sick of us. And I said, well, I'm sick of you guys. I don't have to deal with you people. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to go back in the morning for just a bit. I've got a little bit of correspondence that I prefer to do myself rather than having uh, one of the admin people do it. Um... But otherwise, I think that's it for this week. This week. Okay. So, when I was at the thrift store the other day, I got these tags. Um, and I'm just going to collage over top of them. This is a piece from a workbook for, um, not shorthand, but speed writing. I'm not sure if that's different, the same. It's got a little bit of music on it. I won't glue up the whole thing. I'll just glue up this side. And, uh, can't remember what I was saying. Must have been a lie. little tear off piece I'll stick in that corner so I don't lose it. Uh, this is a piece from a um, maybe a bridge score pad or something.
I'm dropping stuff. This is uh, some of that German stuff. A little too short. some French. Just want to be sure all the yellow is covered. This is some dictionary. Speaking of dictionaries, <laughs> I scored a couple of old dictionaries today. Um, at one point, Jordan had had enough of people. <laughs> so he went into our law library and cleaned out some books. And there was a couple piles of texts that we really have no use for anymore. So he said, do you want any of these? I said, let me have a look. So, as a matter of fact, there was two dictionaries, so I said, yeah, I'll take those. And, uh, they're the old kind, you know. Oh, maybe I'll use the back. The old kind that are like really thin paper and have little um, sketches of the word that they're defining. And I feel like I need another kind of paper. That one's no good. There's nothing on it. This is from an old um, novel, children's book. You know, the kind that we often see with the pretty covers that are inscribed to children from their Sunday school teachers. For being such wonderful children. So in the back of those there's often a list of other books in the series. Okay. Get my big scissors out. Now clearly not everybody has the same access to these tags as I do. Um, so you can cut a tag from any kind of piece of cardboard or, or a heavyweight paper.
probably you're interested in a measurement. So let me take care of that. So it is two and a half inches wide and eight inches long. So that's a good tall one. Now I can either cover the back with um, plain paper for um, tex texting or texting. Have a drink, Nancy. <laughs> for journaling on, well here, here's a big hunk I can use. I'm gonna cover right over the hole because I feel like the hole at the top is too big. So I'll cover it over front and back and then I can recut it. This one I didn't put glue right to the edge of the paper because I want to have more of this uh, Indian text. Let's get some music. Let there be music. So there was a lot of um, texts, um, legal texts, and Jordan asked me if I wanted those. I said, no, they were boring. I've got the windows open because it's, it's very mild, very cool. For July. I have no complaints. So the cat came and sat in the window for a bit. He's gone though. He left. I had kind of a rough night. Last night at three o'clock in the morning, I could hear this banging noise. I jumped out of bed and uh, my husband says to me, what's that? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> That's why I'm getting up. So I started creeping around the house and I couldn't find anything. And uh, I'm uh, looking for ink. But then I started getting concerned because I couldn't find the cat. So I looked around the house for the cat. I didn't call him or anything because I didn't want to wake Doug out. He was okay with us being murdered in our beds, clearly. And after about 10 minutes, I thought, well, Doug must have accidentally left him outside last night or something here. I don't know. But it was 3 in the morning and I was done. So I went back to bed and Doug sort of roused. Everything all right? And I said, no, I can't find the cat. So he jumped out of bed to go looking for the cat. <laughs> I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> I can go get murdered by the guy breaking into our house, but <laughs> the cat goes missing. Woo! <laughs> so he grabbed the cat's treats and he's shaking the package of the cat's treats, calling to him. Kitty! Kitty! And 
within a minute or two. He says, oh, I found him. And I said, where is he? He said, oh, he's standing right in front of me yawning. <laughs> so he was sound asleep somewhere. But usually, as you know, he, he's very attention needy, very needy of attention, that cat. And whenever any of, any of us, either of us get up or make a noise, roll over in bed and he's freaking out. <sighs> so it was a surprise that he slept through me creeping around looking for whoever was breaking into my house. Okay, I'll put that aside and we'll finish up this one. side better. The search for the city of silver. Oh, no. Search for the silver city. This one has lots of dots on it. Let's go with that. I like this side better. I'm gonna pause because my husband's gonna come in here. Yeah, he's just heading out to go out with his friend. And wanted to say goodbye. So I took that opportunity to grab a couple of other um, pages. Something different. So this is from a very old um, recipe book and it looks like the ink is brown, so I thought that would be interesting. And this is from a uh, uh, magazine from 1909, so, and this is from a poetry book. Sounds like he's gone. Actually, I like the bottom better. Or not the bottom, the back. 
because it has desserts. Blackberry Flummery. My favorite. If you're going to have a flummery, it might as well be a blackberry one. <laughs> now, to be honest, I haven't really thought past the collage stage here. variety of fonts and colors. I really like that. That looks nice. I wonder if I have another big blank piece that I could use for the back of this one. Interesting. You look very interesting. Perfect. I also had a staff meeting today um, over um, Skype. Briefly discussed what our return to work might look like. So initially I thought we would be every other week. Starting soon. Now it looks like we're going to be every third week depending on stuff. I don't know. something there. Ooh, I like that side better. It's the thing, you have to look at both sides. Because you just never know.
close that. Okay. All right. Um, so I want to stitch around these and I want to clear off the desk. So I will pause briefly. All right. Time's a waste and let's get this done. So I want to decorate these with some te textures, some textiles. And I also have these uh, very old cigarette cards. So this, it dates to the 1930s. Um, so this is a corn cockle. Very pretty. And this one is sea holly. So I'm going to use those. Um, I got this roll of, it's not ribbon, it's fabric. I have no idea what it would have been for, but it's a roll. And I got it at the thrift store the other day for, I don't know. Uh -huh. That'll be good for tabs. So, um, gonna add some glue. I also got some buttons out here. Okay, so I feel like I want to sew a button on. So I'm just using a little bit of Fabri Tac. see any coming out. Come on you. Here we go. Yeah, yeah I'm going to want to add a button because that glue just went right through. Hopefully it'll dry nice. But we'll use a button to cover that up. That's too bad, that one looked nice and grubby. These ones aren't sorted out at all, they're just... Um, when I get weird buttons, I just toss them in here until I have time to sort through them. Get the colors organized. They're not exactly the same, but they're similar. Okay, I think I'm going to go with that one. I'm going to say, hmm, that one's a little big too. Oh, the big one. Looked like I was doing some kind of karate move there, eh? Okay. Next, I've got this piece of hand crocheted lace. And I'm just going to cut it in half so I can share it a bit with each one. And then I won't, I've got this other stuff, and this is in my shop if you um, are interested. It's just a, um, this very thin, gauzy sort of material. So I'm more or less doing the same size. And uh, just to make it a little ratty tatty, I'll pull some threads. And spread that a little with my finger so it doesn't 
ooze through too much. And I did something a little different. I used, uh, not black, but I used dark brown thread when I sewed that. Um, this one I'm just going to layer on top, um, but sort of offset. Leaves a spider web behind. All right. Now I might want to frame that with something. Sure, why not? Oh, it's getting time to reopen a bottle, I guess. It's getting kind of low. I just want to really, really thin. Um... If these um, kinds of cigarette cards are difficult for you to source, I do have, I just posted yesterday, some small bundles so that you don't have to invest, you know, a ton of money in them um, and buy a great big bunch when you're, you only want to use a few. I mean, yeah, flowers are nice, but you'd get sick of them soon, I would think. They look really nice with botanical images or style. Um, anyway, they are on my Etsy shop. I'll try to remember to put a link below. Alright, so there's a corn cockle. I just thought this would be something different. Um, it seemed like I was doing a heck of a lot of uh, fussy cutting. <laughs> so this one's a little less exact. Um, we can get messy with this one. Ouch, 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 ouch. Yeah, this one's no measuring, nothing exact, except I want this matte perfect. That's all. <laughs> Same deal with this. Here, pull some more threads. I I'm telling you, I am just not into making journals right now. I am trying. I in fact, 
I'm in love with the journal that um, Sunnyside Journals Catherine is working on right now. The uh, the world book one that when she has sort of a children in woods, forest, trees, nature kind of theme going. And I'm absolutely in love with it. And in fact, I was driving yesterday and I kind of, you know, sometimes you kind of <laughs> stop thinking about what you're doing. Uh, and I was, th instead of driving, paying attention to the road, I was thinking about that book. <laughs> so I do have a really cool encyclopedia. And it's like that, em that's like carved out. That's not just embossing. That's... That's something altogether different. And it's the Wonderland of Knowledge. And it's, you know, it's a good hefty size. And, and I mean, that's very unusual cover. I love it. Yeah, no. Maybe I'll switch this up and do it the other way. Yeah. Why not? Why not? I broke my sunglasses. Well, I shouldn't say I broke them. Um, like, you know, here, like at the temple, my sunglasses had this little gold metal piece and they're plastic frames that had this little gold metal piece. So when you put the arm up, that stopped the arm from going any further. Well, for some reason it broke off. So now like the arm of the glasses is like out like this. And I was just, <laughs> just wear them anyway. I don't care. <laughs> and, uh, then on the weekend, I, I keep them in my car just for driving. I mean, um, then I, on the weekend, I was out and about and I went and grabbed my glasses to put them on and the other arm was broke right off. And I thought, well, nuts, because they weren't cheap. Then they're prescription glasses or because I'm blind as a bat. Um, so the optician's office is right across kitty corner to my office. Well, it's been closed for months because it was in a mall and, you know, COVID and yeah. So I went over today and he was able to put like a little thing in place so that my arm would stop flapping right over. And then he put a new screw on the other side to reattach the arm. And then he called um, the manufacturer because I've only had them, I guess it was a year in March. And he said, well, let's see if we can get this covered. Because I, what it needs is a new arm on the left-hand side. Let's see if we can get this covered by your warranty. So they called over and sure enough, so they've ordered it in. God knows how long it's going to take because it's coming from the U.S. Um, but I will happily have my fancy schmancy sunglasses fixed. All right. Just having one more look. Oh, this one's a match. Use this one. Too much glue. Got my wet wipe here. Okay. I'm gonna grab some black thread. Yeah, I've just, 
I'm enjoying the creative process, but I loathe to start a new project because I don't know. I guess I'm worried I won't finish it. And uh, I was chatting with Catherine the other day and she's like, oh, I think you're ready to do a book. And I said, I can't even find my desk. I, I need send help. I can't find my desk. And she said, oh, I don't believe that. <laughs> So I took a picture and <laughs> she was a little shocked <laughs> just how bad it was. Um, pokey. I have no idea where my pokey tool is. Bitch of the cat has it. No one him. He's like that. Well, I'll just poke it with my needle, I guess. Um, but I would have liked to have had a pokey tool so I could put holes through. No, oh, I'm going to need a bigger needle. Oh, pokey tool. I'm not seeing pokey tool. do the ones dry first. Oh, come on. Having more troubles. mentioned something. So the other day I got kind of a rude comment, which I know is not unusual. There are lots and lots of people on the internet where, you know, we all march to different drummers. Um, some people, they just need to comment um, to make themselves feel better, I guess. Uh, and I, I mean, it wasn't awful. I've had worse. <laughs> I haven't called worse. <laughs> um, but it, uh, and in fact, when I first read it, the, the, the gist of the comment was that oh, this was so boring. I had to fast forward through it or something. I thought, well, that's fair. <laughs> I'm boring. <laughs> and then I let it creep into my, um, brain and bother me. So I took the, I took the time to, um, report the comment because I found it harassing and, um, removed it from my comments. I had left it there for probably a day or two before I reacted because it, like I said, it wasn't, na it wasn't nasty, nasty, but I thought, you know what? If you don't like what I'm doing, there are many, many, many other wonderful artists out there who are doing great videos. And for you to take the time to not only fast forward through it, why would you fast forward through it? Just stop it and click on something else. Um, that 
really says something about the behavior we've come to accept, not expect. I don't expect that people are going to do that, but we accept it. And I thought, no, I'm going to put up some firm boundaries. And I just wanted to talk about that. You know, there's, I don't want, I'm not looking for, oh, you poor thing. And you know, we love you, Nancy. I, that's not what <laughs> my point is. My point is, I just wanted to um, let other people who make videos know that I think it's okay to um, set firm boundaries for yourself and um, and don't take those kinds of comments to heart because you don't know where that's coming from. You don't know what kind of emotional payoff that person's getting from you know, trying to hurt someone's feelings, um, you know, okay, <laughs> I'm going to get comments about this for sure. Uh, like recently I read the new, um, uh, expose by Donald Trump's niece, Mary Trump, who is, I believe, is a clinical psychologist and has been on all of the chat shows recently doing interviews. And I want to read the book just out of curiosity um, because, you know, my career is in mental health and I just sort of wanted to see what her analysis was. And uh, I mentioned it to my son I said, have you been seeing these interviews? And he said, yeah. And I said, I want to watch it or I want to read it, but I don't want to pay for the book. Because <laughs> I, I don't know. It just feels creepy making money off of, you know, the misfortune of others. Not, now that's funny. Even putting Donald Trump in the class of misfortunate with all of his money. Um, Anyway, so he bought it yeah, and, and brought it over to me and I read it in a night. And of course, um, the narrative of it, I already knew because she, every story that was in the book, she practically had talked about on all the chat shows, but the, anal the, the psychological analysis of the narrative was very, very interesting to me and, um, really fit with a lot of, uh, theory, like the theory of attachment, um, you know, to parents and I, anyway, I thought it was really, really interesting. And I almost kind of feel bad <laughs> for the whole family. Uh, and, it, and I, and, and I have to say it was, she wasn't just being, um, critical of Donald Trump, she was being critical of the whole family because, I mean, they've all been impacted by their early adverse childhood experiences, um, as all of us are to some degree. Um, yeah. So I don't know what this person's payoff is on an emotional um, basis, but I don't care. I'm not, I'm not, if I had, if I was in a, an interview room with a client who was screaming at me, yeah, I'd kick him out of my interview room or I'd walk out of the interview room. I, I don't, I don't, I don't need to take that burden of pain, of someone else's pain onto myself. So I just wanted to share that if you, if you are a junk journal artist who has a YouTube channel and, and um, you get comments like that, then, you know, just know, um, it's perfectly okay to say, nope, I'm not taking this, take some action and, uh, and carry on. And I just thought maybe a lot of people were getting this sort of thing recently. Um, I know Catherine told me she had a comment the other day, um, where somebody said something similar, but it was a different, it was a different username. Um, but you know, along the same lines that, you know, you suck, you're boring, <laughs> which is 
crazy because she's definitely not. Um, so I just thought, you know what, you know, maybe this is somebody who's making the rounds again. Um, because a couple of months ago we had somebody who was really quite abusive, uh, and rude writing on both of our channels. So anyway, that's all I want to say. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Take care. Um, thanks so much for watching this video. I am now done with June 2008 and we can move on to something else. Take care. Bye-bye.